from the Steampunk Explorer Newsroom. A world of hair-raising adventures, splendiferous personalities, fantabulous creations. Welcome to the world of Steampunk. Welcome to episode four of the world of Steampunk. I'm Stephen Beal, editor and publisher of the Steampunk Explorer, and once again, I'll be your host. We have a very special guest this month, as we recently spent a Steampunk Minute, or actually quite a few minutes, with Chop Pop artist Professor Elemental. You'll hear about the new Ape Quest board game, his starring role in a new horror movie, and how much he misses his orangutan butler, Jeffrey. We also asked when he might next cross the pond to perform in America. That's all later in the show, but first, of course, the news. The Time Travelers Convention Spring Fair will return next May to Quincy, Illinois. This will be the second year for the Steampunk Gathering, which is produced by the Big River Steampunk Festival in nearby Hannibal, Missouri. Last year's inaugural event had a disappointing turnout, but now the organizers will have more time to publicize the festival, and they're also counting on the presence of TV personality Doc Phineas to help boost attendance. They've received a $10,000 grant from the city to help make it happen. Madame Misfit, the steampunk electro swing performer, is out with her second album entitled Pandora's Box. The new album features 10 tracks, including collaborations with Professor Elemental, Thomas B. Wilde Esquire, Emma Clare, and Victor and the Bully. Viewers may recall that she was our guest for the very first episode of The World of Steampunk. Meanwhile, Frenchie and the Punk released Zen Ghost, their seventh full-length album. They've described it as having a dark, mystical vibe, with almost gothic-like guitar grooves. They've released two singles and a music video from the album, and they'll be touring in the UK in the early part of December. Space travel in the Victorian era happens to be the theme for two projects that are currently raising funds on Kickstarter. First is Castle in the Stars, the Universe in 1875, an art book featuring the work of writer and illustrator Alex Alice. It's based on a series of graphic novels set in a world where space exploration began in the 19th century. The book will be designed as an interplanetary travel guide with full color images along with sketches, maps, and immersive texts. Strange Owl Games is raising funds for Space 1889 After, a tabletop role-playing game that also imagines space travel in the 19th century. Players take the roles of space adventurers from different planets who encounter pirates and other hazards as they navigate the solar system. Phantasmagoria, the Victorian horror theatrical troupe from Florida, will present a new holiday-themed stage show featuring their interpretations of two classic tales, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol and Oscar Wilde's The Canterville Ghost. They describe it as a whimsical, family-friendly performance, but with ghostly characters and haunted themes. It kicks off December 2nd through 4th in Orlando, followed by shows in Ocala, Sanford, and DeLand. One of America's wackiest holiday events returns to Vallejo, California on December 3rd. The Mad Hatter Holiday Parade and Festival features art cars, Star Wars characters, Burning Man creations, and even Vallejo's own Steampunk Santa. Vallejo, which is about 30 miles northeast of San Francisco, is the home base for Obtanium Works, the Steampunk Art Car Studio. It's a city that embraces steampunk culture like few others but the event also draws steampunk creators from other places. Here's a look at other steampunk events happening next month. Sacramento, the state capital of California, also has an active steampunk community and they recently made their mark on the city's new Museum of Science and Curiosity. The museum held a steampunk-themed fundraising gala this month, and they recruited members of the Sacramento Steampunk Society to act as hosts. 
The event drew financial supporters and local dignitaries, including Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg. Can you tell which one is the mayor? Now, some folks in the steampunk community have commented on the mayor's, shall we say, prosaic wardrobe choices for this event. But if a big city mayor is willing to be seen posing with a bunch of steampunks, I say hats off to you, Mr. Steinberg. You could be dressed like a plaid Burger King Santa Claus, and we'd still welcome you. But if you really want to score points with your steampunk constituents, you might want to get fashion tips from this guy, Bob Sampayan, the former mayor of Vallejo. During his time in office, Mr. Sampayan was known as the steampunk mayor. He even manages to pull off a steampunk look in a t-shirt. He'll tell you everything you need to know about this wonderful subculture. And now, stay tuned for Professor Elemental. Professor Elemental is one of the world's most popular steampunk performers. He's best known as a master of chap hop, that peculiar British variation of hip hop and rap. But he's also an author, comic book character, and now, with his star turn in a new comedy horror movie, a voice actor. I spent a steampunk minute with the professor, actually quite a few minutes, back in October. We are here with chap hop artist Professor Elemental, all the way from his home in the United Kingdom. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks very much for having me. Finally, we get to meet in person or as close to be in person as we possibly can. I've, I've known you for years, but not actually seen your beautiful face. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. Uh, okay. So, and is my camera working okay? Uh, I think so, yeah. Um, really okay, anyway, uh, so what are you up to these days? My God, what am I, what am I not up to? That's a problem. I've got, too much, I've got too much on my plate, to be honest. I was saying to a friend the other day that I'm doing so much and having so many adventures that I haven't even got time to craft an anecdote out of them before the next thing happens. It's like a weird steampunk quantum leap, basically. One minute I'm in a church, the next minute I'm at a rave, then I'm at somebody's wedding, then I'm at a party. Uh, so there's been a lot of shows this year, a lot of shows, and probably more projects than I've ever undertaken in one go. I think after the pandemic years, where I was still quite busy, but, you know, that, that feeling of like, okay, it's, it's on again, I just said yes to everything this year. And, uh, and I, it, at the rate I'm going, it might be the last year I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Well, let's, let's hope that's not the case. Oh, don't worry. I've got I've got a whole army of clones in the shed. So if I you won't even notice if I die. I'll just one of those will just take over. I, I'll, in theory, really, I, I never I never truly die. Oh, okay. That's good to know. The immortal professor. Exactly. Oh, that's an album title right there. The immortal professor elemental. That's that might be the next album. You heard it here first. Oh my! Okay. Uh, maybe get some credit for that. Uh, but yeah, I guess with the pandemic, things were kind of, uh, we were all in lockdown and now, now we're free and you're performing and everything. That's great. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you're now getting into the, among, among all the other things you seem to be doing, you're now getting into the board game business, it seems, with this game called Ape Quest. Oh, yes. You, you want to tell us about that? Yes, uh, well, the joy about Ape Quest, you, sometimes when I make projects, if I make them on my own, which is quite rarely, you feel a bit churlish about, you know, everybody has those sort of imposter syndrome moments of like, oh, is this, I think this is good, it's something I like, is it good, I'm not sure. But with Ape Quest, I know it's good because someone else did it. <laughs> and this, <laughs> this amazing chap called Mark Powell, uh, who made a game called Bounty Hunters, he masterminded it, came up with the idea and came up with all these unique uh, game characteristics that, he, that aren't in any other games at all. Uh, basically, you play uh, me or a multiverse version of me, which is a nice way to get it a little bit more diverse than just loads of middle-aged white dudes. Um, and so multiverse of professors, which is a beautiful thought in itself, uh, and you're on the hunt for my orangutan Jeffrey wearing my slightly broken time travel trousers, and you meet all kinds of characters on the way, on the way there. We did a Kickstarter. It was hugely successful, and we'll be launching the game soon. Um, and bless Mark, he, he even used lots of characters from uh, sort of lines from my songs. And he was so diligent about it that at one point I got in touch with him and he sort of sent me some of his ideas. And I was like, mate, I like what you're doing, 
but you know, you've got this sort of snake in a library, and you've got this, you know, wild man who appears out of nowhere. I was like, I like the ideas, but could you not use? you know, some of the some of the characters that I've come up with over the years from my songs. And he said, uh, no, Professor, these these are all lines from your songs. I'm like, oh, are they? How marvellous. I'd completely forgotten I'd written any of those. So that was nice. So he was, he's got a much better knowledge of my stuff than I do, which is a relief, really. So, it, and it was based on one of your albums. Ape, Ape Quest was one of your albums, right? It certainly was. One of my favourite albums, yeah. Ape Quest was a whole story uh, about the time that Jeffrey got lost in time and space. Jeffrey, for those who are new to my works, is my orangutan butler, or or rather he was my orangutan butler. Well, let's talk about that, because uh, anyone who's listened to your last album, Nemesis, knows that uh, Jeffrey has moved on to other things. So what, what what's what's going on with Jeffrey? Yes, it's still something I'm really coming to terms with um, for, you know, a decade or so. Uh, like a like a lot of Englishmen, I had a, an orangutan butler in my crumbling down stately home, and he was absolutely the worst butler um, that any man could ever ask for. If you imagine the idea of a of an ape as a butler, it's a, it's a lovely thought, but in practical terms, it was appalling and, and very smelly. Um, but it wasn't until um, I had one adventure where. I, he went off into time and space, um, sort of transcended to a, a, a new level, as it were. And I, I realise now I do rather miss him. I've gathered some new friends, but it's 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 not quite the same. But that's life, isn't it? We we all we all have loss in our lives, and we all have to come to terms with those things, even when it's an orangutan. Wow. So so will there be? Will we ever see Jeffrey again, or are you looking for another butler, or what's what's going on? Well, I've got a I've got a broken robot butler uh, that I found in the basement called Wonky Jeremy, and um, in many ways it's a bit like having Jeffrey around because he's also absolutely awful at his job. Um, but there is a little there's a hankering, and I sometimes wonder that if if science has let me down, that perhaps in my next album I might journey into the world of magic to see if there might be a way to. Uh, retrieve my beautiful ape so i'm gathering some friends and uh, and i'm hoping next year i might be able to come up with some some magical ideas and a brand new album oh looking forward to that uh now another one of your adventures that i found very interesting was this short film uh, guilty could you tell <laughs> us about that well well guilty isn't actually uh, the professor as such uh, but I get to play the role of my dreams. Uh, it's a short horror film directed by Oliver Rogers, uh, and uh, it's about a murderous teapot um, who really yearns yearns for uh, a, a good owner who's going to look after him properly. And when he doesn't get that, he kills and kills again. Yeah, that was uh, I highly recommend it. It was quite original. <laughs> that's a, that's a nice way of putting it. It it, it was well. I love horror. I, I true. I, you know, I love horror in all its many forms. Um, and so the idea of of getting to play a murderer, let alone a murderer's teapot, uh, well, that was everything I ever dreamed. A, a live action film about a homicidal pe teapot. I mean, what a concept. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I was telling you earlier, uh, it was almost like a, an Edgar Allan Poe unreliable narrator. Uh, Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. If if Edgar Allan Poe spent more time working on his on teapot based material, <laughs> then it was absolutely that. And there is there's few there's few more unreliable narrators than crockery. <laughs> I've always found. Um, but yeah, just 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 uh, dipping my toe into the world of horrible things. I I think I like I like horror for the same reasons I sort of like hip hop music. And, and to a certain extent, steampunk and comic books, because they're all sort of genres and subcultures that are kind of shunned by the mainstream. Like the horror section in a bookshop is tiny and hip hop is seen as kind of low culture. Steampunk is out on the fringes. Comic books, you know, up until recently were really kind of like shunned by the mainstream as well. And I think I like I like the underdog. I think that's on the fringes where all the interesting art tends to happen. Interesting. Yes. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Now, now you you have multiple persona uh, personas. Uh, there's Elemental and there's Professor Elemental. So, could you tell us about about how that evolved and and, and how 
elemental is different from professor elemental <laughs> i do um, just for the pur purely for the purposes of social media i do sometimes uh, pretend that i'm i'm not uh, a professor living in a tumble down sussex mansion but i'm in fact a, a normal middle-aged dad if you can imagine that uh, and, and and from time to time in this alter ego i like to rap songs uh, from a more personal point of view touching on sort of politics and uh, hedonism and all that kind of stuff but still with a kind of inclusive bent and um, and again i've hired actors in the past to play my to play a sort of pretend family if you will uh, that live in in brighton in sussex um an 11 year old uh, and a 13 year old and uh, you know and, and even a, i've even got a pretend dog called wilson but that is all imaginary that's not my real life and my real life is is very much that of a steampunk explorer adventurer inventor and erotic dancer oh my oh Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll leave that one alone. Um, I mean, and most uh, people do, no matter how much I try and uh, offer it out. There's not many people who take up that offer, but um, the offer is still there for anybody who is interested. Um, you can check it out on my OnlyFans account. Okay. Well, then, uh, aside from that, what gigs do you have coming up? <laughs> sadly very little in the way of erotic dance even though it's uh, something i've been working on uh but yeah people still like the rapping doing a lot of the rapping um and i've had a nice i had a weekend off this week and it, well, i can't tell you how nice it was just to have a moment with no adventure in it i was like oh this is a moment of silence um so the um the next gigs coming up we've got a uh, club antichrist uh, which is my favourite night of filth in the middle of London, and then a load of lovely Christmas gigs, uh, including the Yule Ball in, in Exeter, um, and um, all kinds of shenanigans, which really, knowing that I had an interview coming up, it would have been a good idea to have written down so I was able to present to you, but I didn't do that. So instead, all I'll ask is for people to look on the website, professorelemental.com, where you can find out where I'm going to be, and then when you found out, maybe drop me a line and let me know as well so I don't miss out. Oh, here you go. Well, you know, the nice thing about doing a video is I do have the ability to uh, put stuff up on the screen. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. People might be seeing as we speak. <laughs> I can't tell you the amount of events that I'm at where I'm sort of going up to people in the audience going, do you know what time I'm on? <laughs> oh, it's now, is it? OK, I'll go and I'll start the show now. Yeah, I rely on the kindness of others, really, uh, in every aspect of life, whether it's creatively or just in, in, in the day to day life to support me on my journey. <laughs> Okay. Now, you're one of the rare um, uh, artists in the steampunk world from the UK who has been to America and has, uh, has, has done events here. Oh, I remember so the, many I, events. The, I yeah, love it. There was like one, one year you, were, you did three gigs or three conventions, I think. Yeah, I think my maximum was five. I think one, one year I did like five, five different trips to the States. Um, uh, if I'm completely honest, I, I was coming all the time like every i just i love america so much people are so kind and lovely and all my favorite stuff comes from there um but there was one trip there was one trip too many for the u.s customs uh and then they said no you cannot come back unless you get a special document so i come a little bit less now because i have to get a visa like a proper official visa um so, so as not to get chucked out but my plan is for any american convention people that are watching this um i was thinking about doing a trip next year uh to the brass screw alliance um uh, and watch city but it was just a bit too much of a burden for them to kind of share this huge cost of the stupid uh, visa i have to get so my plan is 2024 just gonna go all out next year i'm sticking to england i'm just gonna keep it you know just doing all the nice english stuff and 2024 i'm just gonna cram in as many trips to america as I am allowed. So if you have got a convention going on uh, and you're going to do it in 2024, you fancy me coming over from England to America, then drop me a line because I'll be very excited to come and play with you. And I promise, as a guarantee, I absolutely promise there will be no erotic dancing if you book me. And that is a Professor Elemental guarantee. Okay, well, it, it, they might want to put that in your contract, I guess. <laughs> Do you know what? It's not in my contract, but it normally is in contracts with the people who booked me. Like, we will have you, but you must promise not to dance. Okay, okay. Um, and, uh, well, I'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to having you come here. You, you said you, you liked coming here to America. How does the... Uh, do you see any differences in the steampunk scenes between America and the UK or 
or the oh, audiences it's, you play it's, for. It's, 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 it's sort of huge, but also n- n- sort of nothing of any great importance. Like it still attracts the same lovely, polite, inclusive, friendly people. That's you know that stays the same. Um, I think the biggest difference I noticed is that Americans as with all things, tend to go to a bit more effort to it. Now, that's not to say that there aren't people in Britain who make incredible, elaborate costumes, and I'm really good friends with them. But if I had to look at it overall, there's quite a lot of people in England who use it as an excuse to get drunk in a funny hat, uh, myself being one of them. Um, whereas in America, you're a l- I'm a lot more used to seeing like backstories and I've got huge, elaborate wings and a working jetpack and uh, you know, my own submarine and stuff like that. Um, and, of course, American audiences are different. And if you ever want to see how different American audiences are to English ones, just watch an English stand-up special and an American stand-up special. Because in America, you just cheer and whoop at everything. It's, it's brilliant. I, I, there's nothing I like more than an American audience. You don't even have to say anything and people start whooping and hollering, and it just makes you feel so welcome. It's lovely. Where in England, you have to earn that. You have to earn some applause, and even then it might be sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what else is in the future for Professor Elemental? Oh, the future, my immortal future. Um, there's going to be a lot going on. Um, there is going to be next year a huge Kickstarter project called The Art of Professor Elemental, gathering you know, 15 years' worth of wonderful art and comic books that I'm working on with Chris Mole. Um, there will be the Ape Quest game will be launched out into the sky, with, along with a special EP, Ape Quest 2. Uh, there will be a new album called Amazing Friends, uh, and so many other projects. So I'm probably my favourite a uh, little project that I'm working quietly on on the side is something called Tales of Wrong, which is a live-action TV anthology, which will either will either be pitching to the television studios, or if not, I shall start making them for the YouTube. Uh, and that is going to hopefully marry my twin loves of horrible things and steampunk in the best way possible. So it's all very exciting. Wow, looking forward to it. So... Uh... Well, then, um, that's pretty much all the questions I have. I really appreciate you being on the show. Thanks very much for having me. I've got to ask as well, like Steampunk Explorer has been just going for such a lovely long time. I love, you know, I'm such a huge fan of the site. And I think as the subculture sort of fluctuates up and down, becomes more popular in the mainstream and then goes back to a little sort of hardcore subculture of people who truly love it, you're kind of there through it all and you embrace all aspects of it. So first I wanted to say thank you. Uh, and also, now you're expanding into TV. I want to ask you what you've got going on in the future. What's happening next? Well, I'm kind of taking it a day at a time, but I just, uh, uh, I guess I just want to keep getting better at it. I just started this video thing. Um, just going to keep improving it and, uh, and just trying to provide stuff that people find uh, interesting and informative. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you, Professor Elemental. And that wraps up another episode. As always, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You can make a monthly pledge of $1 or more, or you can make a one-time contribution to our PayPal tip jar. No amount is too small. We'll see you next time.